Hi folks, welcome back. So just a few days ago, the folks at OpenAI released a new eval data set. And this measures performance on real world economically valuable tasks. So these are the everyday knowledge work tasks that people do that earn a living, that have economic value. And this is a different tack than tackling the very top of the cognitive pyramid, which consists of things like winning the gold medal on the International Math Olympiad. And they have some really interesting findings. They've put in a lot of work into rigorously compiling this data set, which is why I wanted to look at this paper. So, what have they done? GDP Val is a collection of real world economically valuable tasks. They've looked at a bunch of public government data about the US economy. They've taken the top nine sectors of the economy by how much they contributed to the GDP, gathered a bunch of tasks from each of those occupations, and then done a lot of evaluation and filtering and vetting of the tasks themselves to make sure that the tasks are of high quality. So like they say over here, they've made sure that the tasks are realistic. So these don't just try to look at raw difficulty. These are based on actual work product that professionals do in their day-to-day -day work. They've tried to go broad and cover tasks across the full economy. The full task set has about 1,300 tasks, but they have open sourced a subset of about 200, and we'll look at that a bit later. They also haven't held back on tasks that require various kinds of file formats, things like CAD or photo and video and so on. So these aren't just text in, text out tasks. And these are tasks that took an average of seven hours for the human experts to complete. But like they say over here, some of the more difficult ones took weeks. And just to give you an idea of the breadth, they look at things from real estate, government, manufacturing, finance, healthcare, retail. So this is really a broad cut across the entire economy. Now, before we get into the results, it's worth looking at how they compiled this data set because they did put a fair amount of work and expense into it. So the first step is to actually go find these experts and they had some pretty stringent criteria, a minimum of four years of experience, but they ended up with the average expert having 14 years of experience. And these experts compiled these tasks and the task consists of a request. So this is a description of what the task is and it'll often have some files like you're operating on a Word file or an Excel spreadsheet and so on. And it describes what the deliverable should be. And then they had an other expert look at this initial task description and rate it on whether it was difficult enough, representative enough, whether it was specified decently enough and so on. So you had one expert propose a task, you had another expert then judge whether that was a good task for that profession. This is their flowchart of how they made sure that the tasks are of a high quality. The first stage of reviews, the second stage of reviews, there was some feedback from the reviewers and then the task was updated by the original author of the task before you got some kind of a final sign off for the task to get included into this data set. This is really commendable. All right, so how were these tasks graded? The expert human graders were given blind outputs. So they were given outputs both from human experts as well as model outputs. And they were asked to do pairwise comparisons. So the main metric here is win rate, whether the model has output that is preferred or not. And they were, of course, given the full task description and whatever reference files that tasks needed. And 
this grading itself seems to be pretty intense like they say over here it took over an hour per task and they had to give detailed justifications for why they made the choice that they did all right so here is the headline result across all these tasks they looked at a bunch of frontier models and 50% win rate would be considered parity with an industry expert. And if you look at wins and ties, Claude Opus 4.1 gets the highest score at about 47%. GPT-5 with high thinking is a somewhat distant second at 38%. So it's really commendable for OpenAI to do this with so much objectivity, even though their rival came out on top. One interesting thing they found was that if you look at the timeline of when the model being evaluated was released, you can see a pretty neat linear increase with time. So the more recent models kind of linearly increased their performance across time compared to the older models. They also did some analysis of the various failure modes of the different models. So like they say over here, Claude Opus was best on aesthetics. So that means things like document formatting, layout, while GPT-5 was great on accuracy. So carefully following instructions. And what were the most common failure modes where models lost to human output? As you can see in this graph, if you look at the main causes of bad output for the models, the major one seems to be instruction following, followed by things like formatting and accuracy. So this is good. This is good signal to show what still needs improvement. Now you want to compare what the speed and cost advantage of using AI is compared to using a human. Now, the most naive comparison would simply take the time and cost of using an LLM and compare it against the time and cost of having a human perform that task. But of course, that is not how it would work because the AI can be wrong sometimes. So just doing that naive comparison would give you these really high numbers like the AI is a hundred times better on speed and 500 times better on cost. But if you take a more realistic way of working, which is this try 1x column, where you would first have an AI perform the task and then have a human review it. And if the AI got it wrong, then the human would perform the task. And if you look at that strategy, then the gains in speed and cost come down, even though they're more than one. So for example, the highest gain is about 12% on speed and about 18% on cost. And if you crank up the number of times you ask AI to perform a task, you can get bigger gains like about 40 to 60% on speed and cost. So that is a more realistic ballpark of the speed and cost improvements you can expect with today's models on these representative tasks. Now, they have made available as an open data set about 200 of these tasks, not the full data set. And this is what it looks like. This is a JSON representation of the task. So each task has an ID. It tells you which sector that task is about, what occupation would typically perform that task. And then there's a long prompt describing the task and what you want in the output. So for example, it says you are a senior manager for EV battery sourcing at a leading automotive company. The CPO has asked you to consider localization of assembly and then a little bit about what you want in the output, what the goal of the task is. And then some tasks will have reference files that are needed as background. Now, looking at that example task, you might already get a sense for what the limitations of a study like this are. The biggest one, in my opinion, is that these tasks are all self-contained. These are all one-shot, isolated tasks and not really end-to-end -end workflows 
which chain together a bunch of different tasks to get a much higher level output or accomplish a much more complex goal. And these tasks don't use tacit knowledge. If you've worked in any modern company, you know that a huge chunk of work is accomplished with tacit knowledge, stuff that people just have in their heads. It's not written down anywhere. And then these tasks didn't use any proprietary software tools, just the common office things like documents and spreadsheets. They didn't involve communication between people. So like I said, these are individual tasks. These aren't tasks that are performed by teams of people. And these are one-shot, precisely specified tasks, not interactive. These aren't tasks that are agentic in that you would go back and forth with the model or have the model reason and plan across multiple steps. But overall, this is a really valuable data set, a very important eval benchmark that is very welcome because it tacks away from the very academic benchmarks that focus on science and math and coding and looks at more everyday tasks that are performed by professionals in the day-to-day -day economy. I hope you enjoyed that and I will see you next time.